everybody, I'm Will. And I'm Kristen. And this is So I'm Watching Bridgerton, Season 3, Episode 8. Into the Light. This was really good. I liked it a lot. It was re- it kind of felt like a series finale. Well, it's definitely greenlit for a fourth yeah. season. I would love for them to do all eight. I feel like at this point, we're just lucky with whatever we get, but... We'll get five. I hope. Yeah. yeah. When they... I really, I am actually, I love Hyacinth's book. I was going to say, when they, like, put Francesca in with Penelope, yeah. I was like, okay, Renette. we're, like... Yeah. Um, I am trying to think of... I don't know. I, I'm still kind of taken aback. It was beautiful. So pretty. The whole show has been... It is beautiful, but it just... I I, I feel special. Like I, I, like, I feel like I need to savor it when I'm watching something that is so pretty, pretty yeah. and frivolous that is given the budget and the time and the stuff that it needs. Yeah. And it just, like... And it actually felt like it crescendoed. Like, it uh-huh. felt like the costumes, like, Ugh. got prettier as the yeah. season went. Look, I think Penelope's wedding dress is the best of, so far, all of the wedding dresses. But, like, Francesca's was all, a very close second. But it was so different. Yeah. Like, it looked like her. Mm-hmm. And that, like, it it, 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 it's not that thing where sometimes when you have, like, a certain, like, show with a costume designer or whatever, everything can kind of look the same. Yeah. And it, th- they were not similar dresses or styles yeah. or... Yeah, so I actually pointed that out in our coverage of the first four, where, because I was like, everybody kind of has their own silhouette. Like, the queen is still very, uh like baroque Mm -hmm. and like very georgian kind of but it's like kate has her sorry like look and penelope has this like very specific with the sleeves and everything eloise is very like i want to say like academic kind of and then um violet always has that like tiny little collar and mrs featherington i mean it's just Everybody has their, it, it, they definitely look like they all go to the same tailor because they fucking do, but they all have their own, like, style that they do at mm-hmm. the same tailor. But but I also mean beyond the clothes, like, even this season, like, I like the second part better than the first part. Mm. I thought the first part was a little bit, for lack of a better word, perfunctory. Like, I it was... wonder if, like, now that you know the back half, if you'd, perf- if you'd like it better. It's not about better or worse. I just I I found more than you did. I guess is what. Well, I, mean. yeah, I don't know. I I was. I think I was. I, I I knew where it was going in part one, and part two was a bit more like, where is this ride? Like, yeah. Where is this going to take us? The only thing that that it it doesn't doesn't. It, the only thing that felt weird for me was Cressida in this episode. Yeah. It fo- the logic follows, and it certainly it, it it seemed like in part one we were starting a redemption arc. Agreed. And then part two, she felt like her characterization was back to season one and two, but they were just like punishing her. Yeah. Like, okay. So that is whereas my... opposed to in part one, I felt like we were starting to understand and root for her. Yeah, I agree completely. The- Cressida, I think, is the biggest miss of the second half of the season for me because. You, like, they they humanized her so much in the first half, her and Eloise and, like, the whole thing and, like, how she was like, I need to get married. There's no other way to do this. And so then for the second half to be her, like, mostly scheming, I'm not, I don't hate the scheming. She was just cutthroat yeah, in a and way. I, and again, I don't, I don't necessarily hate that or the scheming, but now because you humanized her, her punishment so outweighs the crime. But it also, you sure, but I was gonna, I, I would well, go like, as I don't as, want her to live with Aunt Joanna. No, that sounds well, awful. Well, God, no. And it was so, I mean, I love it. <laughs> I was gonna say it was so heavy handed with the, yeah. the literal chains in her, in her hair. hair. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I would, I wouldn't even go as far as to say that they humanized her. I think they started to. Yeah. Like they, they, it was, they showed glimpses of character growth that I feel like they just sort of abandoned mm-hmm. when the plot needed it. Yeah. And there's, we're getting another season, so one can only assume that we're going to pick her story back I up would, then. I would love that, yeah. Because there are a handful, and you know, now Maybe that I, her father will die in between seasons and her mother will let her back, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I don't like her mother enough to... She's not as bad. No. She's like, she's just as hobbled by circumstance mm-hmm. as anybody. I just like, because I I remember now, speaking of Cressida, that this happened in season one with, I don't remember who exactly he was, but the prince, mm-hmm. where it's like, they have characters that sort of come and go. Yeah. And I'm like, were we done? 
because yeah. it's like I I just b- believed Lord Debling was gonna be back, and he's just not. And was... I would have loved that if he was just like. Well, and again, I I would I would think that we have that potential in a season four in two years. Unacceptable. But, That's yeah. like a way. That, okay, so what I saw from the showrunner is that they were they are thinking two years. They are hoping to do it faster. But I'm just sort of like when when okay when we were in a transition period, I understood the long breaks between yeah. seasons. But I feel like this is just probably the way TV, TV is works now. now. So account for that. Yeah, like co- contractually. I agreed. And it, it, I, I because I do think this is unsustainable. I think it is too much to ask the average person, and especially with a binge model. Yeah two parts or not mm-hmm. for the average person to retain that information let alone a passion for some I, yeah. I don't know I mean I guess if like, a show I'll, makes I'll, you feel special I'll always get excited when there's a new season of Bridgerton but also like come on like my time is not infinite <laughs> you know <laughs> like, I don't please. know I, I and I think with I, I like I said I, I think that this is just so much the new normal now that they should be accounting for this. I agree completely. In accounting. <laughs> I, no, I agree, I agree completely because, you know, you might say that we, like, grew up in a time of, like, the golden age of television, which I would agree we've had multiple cycles of that since we've been alive. But it's like, there is something to be said for a season of 22 episodes of a show where some of them are filler and you start in September and you <laughs> end in May. And, like... And you're getting it back in September. I'm just saying, like, that is something. And, I mean, it does a lot of things for a lot of people. And it's what you always say where it's, like, at a certain point we're going to reach entropy because you can't... The issue with American capitalism is that everybody thinks you can have infinite, in- infinite increases in profitability forever. And you simply can't. So it's like, you have to do something. Because it's better for the actors, because they're getting more work. It's better to, like, let stuff breathe so you can have more, like, let's see what happens when these two characters... Like, what, like let's get Chandler and Phoebe together. That's a weird <laughs> underrated pairing, you know? And I just, like... Let, I want a scene with, like, Penelope and Gregory. Let's see what those two get up to, you know? Like, you're killing me. Just, sure. You know what I mean? <laughs> Come on. I do is yeah. why I'm laughing. Yeah. But... <laughs> so anyways. What Honestly, was I... no. Lady Danbury and Gregory. <laughs> I feel like that's the pairing that we need. <laughs> just like cahoots. Just the two of them like doing pranks. That feels, yeah. Feels in character for both of them. We should probably talk about the actual plot. I was going to say, I'm trying to think. <laughs> <laughs> We were talking about Cressida. Yeah. She figured out that Penelope was Lady Whistledown mm-hmm. and just tried to hard blackmail her. and For, like, all of her money. Yeah. yeah. And they outsourced it to Colin to come and, <laughs> I guess, beg for mercy. And, it and he made it worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which he then admitted. Yeah. <laughs> which was funny. I do love that he basically, they went, she asked for 10,000 pounds. And then um, Penelope was like, well, I'm just going to pay her. And they were like, you don't have that kind of money. And she was like, I really do, though. Uh, And so Colin got very righteous and was like, no one's going to blackmail my wife. And then he went to speak to Cressida. And then he came back and was like. Because she's only in this, in this like back half, she's only his wife when he can be righteous about it. Exactly, (laughs) exactly. So he goes to Cressida and he like does the whole thing and it doesn't work out. And she's like, no, I just will be telling everybody unless you give me now 20,000 pounds. And so when he gets back and he's like, oh, I tried and I made it worse. I was just like. I muffed it up a bit. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. You did. Uh, the actual MVP of this season was Portia. I agree. I am yeah. glad that I stuck with her. Yeah. And and championed her a little well, bit. Well, the great Polly Walker. I yeah. love her so much. She's, She's so good at that. And I, I feel like she has to have been in so many things. And I've really only seen her in a couple things. But yeah. it is very... Vanessa Redgrave applause uh, upon yeah, her entrance. For sure. But they, they did, because I, I, I made a comparison. I said it was very much like Alice and Betty Cooper. Mm-hmm. And they really leaned into it this season, and especially the back half, and the way in which her and the way in which Portia and Penelope mm-hmm. leaned on each other and learned from each other. And they kind of, it, it, I guess Portia finally realizes that 
Penelope is her daughter. Penelope's in more ways yeah. than more ways She's than worth one. a damn. Um, and we we also did get a lot of uh, from Violet, and not mm-hmm. just in the sense that she had a love interest, but you know, obviously the family thing has always been. It's called Bridgerton. Like yeah. the family thing is the show, but I really felt it in this season and yeah. again in the back half. Well, we also got some, you know, everybody's asked us or like told us that Queen Charlotte is very good. I would venture to say we are going to mm-hmm. knock it to the top of our TBD mm-hmm. um, towards the top. I do. Golda's yeah. in it, right? Uh, yes, some. They, it's go most, back. they go back and forth, yeah. I I don't know how much she's in it. Yeah, I find Golda so captivating. She is so captivating. There, it, it, it's, speaking of Vanessa Redgrave. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the smile. On mo- mo- or the kiss on mother's yeah. lips and Peter Pan, where just she always, the, anytime you look at her, it, there's sort of layers. Yeah. And I I love how she can play menacing, but also Daffy mm-hmm. sometimes within the same scene. Yeah. It, it, it's, yeah. I she's don't know. She's fantastic. I totally agree. <laughs> she's just, she's so beautiful. And I loved, uh, in this one, she had like a mini Ripperton moment with all the baby's breath in her hair. Oh my god, it's beautiful. <laughs> I like, I love it so much. But yeah, I especially, um, oh, so that's what I was gonna say, is like, we got some more nods to Queen Charlotte. I have been, I- I'm like a little, a little bit more chronically online than you are, and so I've like seen some stuff. And well, like, we're online in different ways. We are online <laughs> in different ways. Um, but I-, I have taken to understand that Lady Danbury had sex with Violet's father when they were young. And so that's what I gathered from that little um, tete-a-tete between the two of them. Um, but they, uh, they are on a good standing now, and Violet is being Danbury courted. Was wearing that. Beautiful yeah. green velvet. Unreal. It, it like, uh, I, it, it, this is an embarrassment of riches. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, one of our favorites, of Butterflies, Butterflies and Books, books. asked us to, like, do a ranking or for a favorite. I don't know if I can. I, well, I could, but the, the problem with that sort of thing is I need to be taking notes as, as it it's happens, happening, yeah. and I need the visual. Yeah. Because off the top of my head, uh, Queen Charlotte's red and blue. Sure. Uh, this, the fucking bug ball. That was amazing, yeah. Everything I have ever wanted. And I get that it was supposed to be gaudy. No, but it was awesome. No, it was. It was like, this is just beautiful. Yeah. This is just exquisite. It was, even like the, even the Philippa and Prudence weren't as gaudy as they often are. They And I mean, they prettied them up this yeah. season, but still. It, Phil, Pr- Philippa's hair. This, she's doing this like Veronica Lake, uh-huh. like Jessica Rabbit thing It's almost the whole molded time. though. Yeah. Like she just clunks it on. <laughs> yeah. I part of me wishes that they made a little bit more peace with Penelope, but then another part of me is like, no, no, it's fine. It's I right don't want that it to way. be completely different. It's right yeah. that way, and and it it, it just I don't think it, this is a clever observation, but it just is Cinderella. Yeah, and I kind of because that's what I've always said about why I find um, Cinderella's stepmother to be so fascinating because Portia is what. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She could have been at yeah. the last minute. Yeah. The stepmother could have been like, you know what? Bygones. It's fine. Let me lean into this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but I loved the bugs because I forget why, but I had just recently online seen a thing. And it, it, I mean, it's the kind of thing that I knew about because they did it on like America's Next Top Model yeah. and Violet Chachki did it in her stepping down look. But, like, around this time period, bugs were very in fashion. Yeah, well, like, and still life paintings, they would, they're everywhere. They would bedazzle beetles and yeah. wear them and it like is a mixture of yeah. <laughs> things yeah, but cool. I, I like w- I wanted them to do it and they did butterflies which is much yeah but they were dressed like beetles mm-hmm. so I'm I'm cool I'm cool I was gonna say it. the butterflies is much more palatable and I'm yeah. fine with that but I oh well God. also it just like makes a better picture like just like having a cabinet of beetles would not have been as exciting as, like, butterflies being released. Sure, 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 sure. But th- just that whole scene, yeah. and everybody dressed like one of the sisters. Uh-huh. Everybody was in, like, the metallics. Uh-huh. And the way the lighting was, depending on where you were in the room, you're, like... Because Penelope's oh, dress dressed... was four different colors. Uh-huh. It was amazing. Uh, and... I guess if I... So if I have to pick a favorite dress of the whole season, it, it's Penelope's wedding dress. 
Yeah. A hundred percent. It was. That's, that that's was, a solid. That's a solid one. <laughs> I mean, stunning. But then also that series of like those three like silvery purple mauve mm-hmm. dresses. Well, because that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. I, I, I more so than a particular favorite specific dress, I had like flourishes that I liked yeah. because um, I enjoyed actually uh, most of Eloise's dresses this season as well. Oh, I think they're so plain. No, but she, but less plain than seasons one and two. Sure. Yeah. Uh, actually, I liked her jewelry. Yes. Eloise's jewelry. Yeah. She had a couple of really excellent necklaces. Um, And I love, we're looking at like a picture of the, it's like the cast poster, yeah. but this Kate look, this like, mm-hmm. um, it's cause it's, again, metallics, it's like rust. But and... it's because it's like that Blake Lively Met Gala dress. Mm-hmm. It's turquoise and like mm-hmm. bronze. Yeah. Patina. Yeah. And uh, there was a lot of, uh, because, like, Penelope was largely wearing pastel blue and purple, mm-hmm. but I, I loved when, they were, like, she would have, like, a shawl or, like, a um, stole or, like, yeah. uh, that that was, like, pink or purple. She or... also, there was, like, an overlay of, like, lighter, like, pink tulle over, like, a lot, especially the busts and the sleeves, and that was really lovely as well. Really good. Just a really beautiful season. Who? is John Sterling's sister because I noticed you m- making not a face cousin when, cousin yeah when okay. she when she came on screen you were very <laughs> <laughs> okay I guess I don't actually want spoilers but I I noticed I can't really speak about it I noticed you your lack of reaction <laughs> if you don't want spoilers no, I can't okay. really speak about it am I am I to guess that we should be getting her in season four? Um, yes, uh, she is important, and also, uh, she has been gender-bent from the book. Oh. Yeah. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. Just saying. No reason. (laughs) No reason. Did you literally not see how awkward Francesca was? (laughs) I was going to make a joke when Benedict and Eloise were on the swings. Mm-hmm. So I was going to be like, the gay siblings, the gays always find each other. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> the, f- the Benedict, Benedict stuff was so funny. It was good. I loved it. <laughs> well, it okay. Good. But we just kept cutting back to them yeah, okay. in like oh, a yeah, time yeah. loop. or like. <laughs> no, it's like that one episode of Buffy where they can't, she and Riley can't stop because the house is haunted by like <laughs> oppressed children it's just like it was morning yeah. the, the next day yeah, and they were and still we go back and yeah. it was so funny okay here's the thing for me that's ac- that's the actual funniest is like he was like hesitant about uh paul i get a better name <laughs> <laughs> take that paul <laughs> so he was he was hesitant about that and then he got dicked down and then Lady Tilly was like, I'd like us to be exclusive. And he was like, ooh, bad timing. <laughs> like, if only you hadn't thrust this dick on him. Yeah, on him. In him, on him, around him. <laughs> Dicks everywhere. If only you hadn't introduced... Dicks introdu- akimbo. <laughs> if only you hadn't introduced that concept to him, he maybe would have. But you opened up his eyes, and now he does not want to be exclusive with you, lady. This is a, like, you hoist it on your own petard, for sure. I really liked her. Me too. I feel Tom, like yeah. she's gonna be, like, Lord Debling or the Prince, yeah. where it's like, I feel like we're done with her, and that's fine, yeah. but if my two cents is worth anything over at Netflix, I'd say keep her around. Uh, we all know nobody no. at Netflix <laughs> gives a shit what anybody on this side of the camera thinks. Because, I, I don't know, I, I really enjoyed that. I thought it was fun, and I thought it was nice, and I also, I like... That Benedict has come to a place where, okay, in the first place, I think it was really, really stupid of him to, like, temper tantrum quit the art school just because Antony made a donation to, like, ensure he got in. I think he should have kept doing that. Um, That was in season two. That being said, I do like that he's finally come to a place where he's like, I just want to, like, be me and, like, explore the world and experiences and stuff. Um, But he also is, like... He doesn't want to, like, leave. He doesn't want to go adventuring. Technically, he is still acting Lord Bridgerton right now while Antony fucks off and doesn't do his goddamn job. So he does have to, like, stay around and, like, hang out. But, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I kind of liked where he ended, and especially his relationship with Eloise as well, where they just are like, let's keep hanging out on the swings and, like, not know what we're doing with our lives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, well, um, Penelope outed herself mm -hmm. as um, Lady Whistledown to the Queen, and it happened at the, the Beetle Ball. Um, the, the Dankworth Finch Ball. You were right, it does sound revolting. Um, and so she basically, like, pleaded her case and was like, you know, I'll be more responsible in the future. And the Queen was like, what's life without a little gossip? And Exactly. Yeah. Because she had that scene with, um... Lady Danbury, too. So she's... Con yeah, of yeah. course. Uh, so she's continuing it, but she's treating it more like a column. Yeah. Like a newsletter now. And she's using her own name. Uh, well, as the author, but it still is. Like, Lady, Lady Wisdom, yeah. is the branding. Yeah. She's ahead of her time. She is ahead of her time. <laughs> <laughs> and they did have all three of them. All three Featherington girls yeah. had babies, and Penelope had the boy, yeah. which... We called in the beginning. <laughs> it is not book accurate. Her first child is a daughter named Agatha, but I am I allow that. That's a change I can get behind. So he is the new Lord Featherington, mm -hmm. which makes the money stay in the family. Oh, and the solicitor did come back and was like, your aunt that you claim you got this money from died penniless with like a bunch of creditors. So obviously it wasn't her and you're lying and you stole money from the ton. So like, you're going to get in trouble. And so then Penelope was like, now that I'm out as Lady I kept waiting down. for one of them to, to brand him with a fire poker. Yeah, well, you also were like, maybe he's allergic to something in that cookie. <laughs> the cookie was very conspicuous. <laughs> yeah. I was waiting for, like, hijinks in that mm, scene, yeah. and it just didn't happen. But Penelope was, was like, now you can tell him that all the money is from my writings, mm -hmm. and everything's fine. So that was nice. I liked I liked that quite a lot as well. Well, we glossed over it, but Francesca and John Sterling are going to Scotland, yep. and Eloise is going to go with her because yep. she wants to explore the countryside, amongst other things. Yeah. And uh, Violet, they really kind of, they really nailed that. Because I'm not a big, like, I'm not a schmoopy family person, but I was in the feels. Like, this show really. Okay, I loved uh, Lord John's, uh, like, toast to the family. I warmed up so much with him. I'm so glad yeah. that we kept talking that you brought this up. Yeah. Because his stupid mud story was in two episodes ago or whatever. Charming. It was so good. Because it was so bad. Yeah. But then also that's what made it good. Yeah. It was very it was very much about like, did I ever tell you about the story about the duck who crossed the road to get to the other side? <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, it did it to get to the other side. Yeah. Which was where his heart was. <laughs> and it was just like, oh okay, yeah, <laughs> I don't fun. know. I really came around. Yeah. I liked I liked the toast a lot, how it was like, you know, the different parts of you are like in your children respectively and stuff. I just thought it was sweet. And then Francesca and Violet played the piano badly together. Mm -hmm. Super cute. Loved it. Uh Will and Alice were there. Their plot oh, has that not was so nice that been... they got invited to Francesca's wedding. Well, uh, but their whole plot is how they can't they're like fighting off inv well, no. invites. So <laughs> but they did they, they didn't end. There. But it also is like Francesca was like we want a special license so we can just have like a family wedding and mm -hmm. then they still invited them. I thought it was sweet. Mm -hmm. I like the Montriches. They're cute. Um I think that that's Yeah, I like straight up can't decide if we're forgetting anything. I'm certain we are. Yeah. Oh, I I think we said, but Penelope gave, like, a bunch of money to Varley to, like, make sure that her sister's ball was, like, really great. And then she gave um, credit to Portia. Mm -hmm. It was nice. And then Philippa named her daughter Philomena. <laughs> Upset. Colin got his book published. Um, yeah. Good. Good ending. Oh, no, I loved yeah. it. It was... Yeah. We ended on a high note, so... See you in 2026. Bye. Bye. Oh, unlike this episode, <laughs> which careened off a cliff. Yeah. Thud. The end.